Assalamu alaikum. Hello everybody. Today our video about ultrasound diagnosis of placenta accreta. In this video I will talk about three points. Definition, practical advice for ultrasound examination for uh, placenta accreta spectrum and standardized ultrasound signs and their physiopathology. Definition Placenta accreta spectrum describes the clinical conditions where the placenta abnormally adhere to or invades the uterine wall. If the placenta is forcibly removed, massive obstetric hemorrhage may can occur. The pathologist differentiates placenta accreta spectrum into three subgroups. 1. Placenta accreta is defined by abnormal attachment to the myometrium with an absent decidua. 2. Encreta represents invasion of the villous tissue deeply into the myometrium but not reaching the serosa. 3. Percreta has placenta villi which completely invades the myometrium reaching the serosa or beyond. Prenatal imaging shouldn't only attempt to diagnose presence and degree of placenta accreta spectrum, but should also clearly describe important clinical features such as presence and the site of significant new vascularity, posterior bladder wall involvement, or cervical invasion. This enables appropriate management, either surgical or conservative, to be planned in advance of delivery thereby reducing maternal morbidity. Practical advice for ultrasound examination for placenta accreta spectrum. Requirement for bladder filling. The ultrasound scan must be performed with a filled bladder between 200 and 300 milli. This is vital because the bladder outline enables identification of the lower uterine segment, presumed location of the previous caesarean scar, and allows assessment of placental position relative to it. Also, without a full bladder, important signs such as bladder wall interruption, placental bulge, and uterovesical hypervascularity can't be appropriately assessed. Standardized ultrasound signs for placenta accreta spectrum and their physiopathology includes 1. Loss of the clear zone 2. Myometrial thinning 3. Placental lacunae 4. Placental lacunae feeder vessels 5. Bladder wall interruption 6. Placental bulge 7. Focal exophytic mass 8. Subplacental and or utrophysical hypervascularity and nine bridging vessels. Number one, loss of the clear zone. This term is used when the hypoechoic line normally seen in the myometrium under the placental basal plate is not visible on ultrasound. The equilucent area under the placenta is thought to be caused by the thinning of the decidua basalis and the development of fibrinoid layer. Its absence is thought to be caused by an abnormal extension of the placental villi through the decidua basalis into the myometrium. Number 2. Myometrial thinning. This sign is reported as a prenatal diagnostic sign for placenta accreta spectrum but is only reported in 50% of cohort studies. In abnormally invasive placenta, the myometrium appears to be vanishingly thin as it can't be seen or measured separately to the placenta. Differential diagnosis includes a uterine window. Here, a normal placenta covers adhesions in the myometrium. Therefore, the pathology of a uterine window is that of a scar defect 
rather than a placental abnormality. Number three, placental lacunae. This is the presence of numerous lacunae, including some that are large and irregular, often containing a turbulent flow visible in gray scale imaging. This is visible on transabdominal and transvaginal ultrasound and is the most common ultrasound sign described in placenta accreta spectrum, with around 80% of the authors reported it prenatally. Independently of the depth of invasion, the differential diagnosis has to be made with placenta leaks, which are equilucent areas in the center of a cotyledon, which have nothing to do with placenta accreta spectrum. Placenta lacunae develop secondary to the distortion of the anatomy of one or more cotyledons, including an interlobular septa due to the arrival of high-velocity maternal blood from a radial or arcuate artery. Big systolic velocity often be more than 10 cm per second. The blood flow inside the lacunae can be detected and observed also in color and or pulsed wave Doppler. Number 4. Placental lacunae feeder vessels these are seen as vessels with high velocity blood flow arising from the deep arterial vasculature of the myometrium, which feeds the lacunae. A study found that the total area occupied by vessels in normal and placenta in creta placental beds is similar, but that vessels are significantly sparser and larger in the invasive placenta. This could explain the abnormal hemodynamics underlying the development of the lacunae seen in invasive placentation. Number 5. Bladder wall interruption. This is the loss of or interruption to the bright line representing bladder wall, the hyperechoic line between the uterine serosa and the bladder lumen. This is potentially caused by villus invasion into the muscle of the posterior wall of the bladder, thereby changing the echogenicity, but is most often an ultrasound artifact arising from the massive new vascularity found between the posterior wall of the bladder and the anterior aspect of the uterus. Care must be taken with the angle of insonation, which can cause artifactual drop out if the probe is not kept in the correct axis to the placental bed. Number 6. Placental bulge. This is defined as the deviation of the uterine serosa away from the expected plane caused by an abnormal bulge of placental tissue into a neighboring organ, typically the bladder. The uterine serosa appears intact but the outline shape is distorted. It most likely represents villus invasion deep into and or through the myometrium, resulting in loss of structural integrity of the surrounding uterine muscle. The placenta will then bulge outward into surrounding structures. This phenomenon is also described at MRI and laparotomy as snowman sign. Number 7. Focal exophytic mass. Placental tissue is seen breaking through the uterine serosa and extending beyond it, usually into a filled urinary bladder. This finding is extremely rare. Number 8. Subplacental and or utero-vesical hypervascularity. This is the observation of a striking or abnormally large amount of color Doppler signal seen in the placental bed or between the myometrium and the posterior wall of the bladder. It is a subjective decision by the operator and therefore requires experience with normal placental beds which can be very vascular. This sign probably indicates numerous closely packed tortuous vessels in that region 
demonstrating a multi-directional flow and aliasing artifact. It results from excessive dilatation of the utero-placental circulation beyond the spiral arteries, including the radial and arcuate arteries, as well as the myometrial arteriovenous anastomosis, and it is a prominent feature of placental accreta spectrum on prenatal ultrasound. This can indicate the finding of extensive new vascularization within the peritoneum, especially between the anterior wall of the uterus and the posterior wall of the bladder at laparotomy. This picture shows a uterovesical hypervascularity A and a normal example for comparison B on color Doppler imaging. And this is subplacental hypervascularity A and a normal example for comparison B on color Doppler imaging. Number 9. Bridging Vessels These vessels appear to bridge from the placenta across the myometrium and beyond the serosa into the bladder or other organs, often running perpendicular to the myometrium. This bridging is an ultrasound artifact as these vessels don't traverse between the myometrium and the bladder but are actually the contorted vessels of the new vascularity within the peritoneum caught in cross-section in a two-dimensional image. 